everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making a ring out of zirconium. And this is a really exciting material to work with because it sparks and lights on fire and does a bunch of crazy stuff. So it's gonna be fun and there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff like slow motion shots. I think this will be a really interesting video to watch. And I wanted to show you some videos here. There's not very good ones on YouTube, that, at least that I could find. But this is just a video of a guy who's got a big bandsaw and he's cutting chunks of zirconium. And he's got a ball of zirconium shavings to the side here and he's, the whole point of it is that he's showing that it's dangerous. So you can see a ton of sparks just flying off here. And then eventually the ball will catch on fire. So he's just cutting it here and sparks are going everywhere. So it's not like most materials, it's like he's not welding it or anything. Then you can see there, that's where the zirconium starts on fire. So really cool material. I think this will be interesting to film at the very least. And then when we're done with it, we can actually use a blowtorch and I believe we can put a black finish on it. So we're gonna have to experiment with that. Like I've said, I've never even used this material before. So this will be interesting, first of all, to machine it. And then second of all, to experiment with finishing on it. And then here's another video. It's kind of crappy too. He's through like a plexiglass sheet, but it looks like he's spinning it somehow. It might be even a lathe, but you can just see the sparks flying off of it like crazy. I'll rewind it a little bit. So this should be a really interesting video, especially for me, it's gonna be educational because I've never worked with this material before. We're gonna to have to work with it and see what kind of results we can get. And also, if you didn't notice, I've got this hat. If you're interested at all, I've got a link to my supplies website. That's where I'm gonna be having my merch, at least for now. And so there's a link down to there. Because we're just launching it, I'll probably do a promotional code and that'll be in the description as well. We're not really charging a lot for these. The goal isn't to make any profit or anything like that. We just wanna provide hats and t-shirts if you guys are interested. So if you're interested, check out that link below. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got the rod of zirconium in my metal bandsaw here, and I was really hoping for some sparks, but there wasn't a single one. Maybe this saw just doesn't go fast enough to create sparks or something like that. And it was kind of discouraging, but you'll see there's definitely gonna be a lot of sparks to come. So I was a little bit worried we wouldn't be able to get them. But you'll see right away, like even right here, I'm just cleaning up some of the burrs left by the bandsaw with this Dremel here. And it's creating a good amount of sparks, but we'll definitely have a lot more on the lathe. So now that we've got the piece all cleaned up, we're ready to put it in our lathe. And then I'm using this tungsten carbide center drill and then I'm just cutting a hole all the way through the middle, just big enough that we can fit one of the boring bars in it. And then we'll be able to continue to widen the ring so that we can get it to the size that we want. So here it is, it just kinda does a rough job. We just wanna get a hole created in the middle and then we'll be cleaning it up and making the ring a lot bigger with the boring bars. So I start out with this really small one that's small enough to fit inside this hole here, but it's not a very sturdy boring bar. It's got a lot of flex to it. So I'll switch over to a more sturdy one as soon as I can. Now you can see I'm just flattening the side of the ring here. That's just to make sure all the surfaces on the ring are parallel to each other. I want this ring to look really uniform and precise. And you can see as I'm getting further along, I'm not getting the spark. So I get a little more and more aggressive with the lathe at each time. And you can see I finally get it to start heating up and you can see the shavings coming off of it are this amber color, some of them even this purple color. And I'm really going a little bit overboard here. I'm just trying to get this cool effect. So I definitely wouldn't recommend doing exactly what I'm doing here. I'd take it a little bit more easy but I'm really trying to get this kind of fireworks effect show for you guys here. And you can see here in a second, this is where the sparks are gonna start flying and then all the zirconium shavings are gonna catch fire and it's gonna be really cool. I won't do any talking during that. I'll just shut up and let you guys watch it. Flowers and the birds and the leaves and all the lights that were on that day. 
All right, that was really cool, especially those slow motion shots. It just looks amazing having all those sparks flying everywhere and then just this super bright flame coming off of it. But now we'll go ahead and work on the outside of the ring. I'm using this ring mandrel here. I actually have these available on my supplies website. I get comments requesting these all the time. Literally every single one of my video has it. So if you're interested, there's a link to that in the description. There's even a coupon code. So for the outside, I'm just trimming off a thin little layer here. I ended up making this ring a little thinner than I wanted because I was just trying to get all those sparks out of it. And so I'm just being careful to remove the thinnest amount of material that we can do and still have a completely clean, all new surface. That way the ring will be completely concentric and have an even thickness all over. And then I'm polishing it here. What I want to do is I want to do a brushed finish in the middle and then have polished bevels. And this ended up being redundant. So I just want to show the process that I took, but this isn't necessary at all. So I learned from this. I did the bevels, but I actually ended up redoing the brush finish on the center. And I think this is going to look really interesting. We're going to have a brush finish in the center that kind of diffuses the light better and then a polished mirror surface on the bevels. I think that'll make the ring look really sharp and add a bit of interesting detail to a ring that doesn't have a ton going on other than the fact that it's going to be this pitch black color. And then on the inside, I'm going to do a bit of comfort finish to it. Like I said earlier, this is a thin ring, so I don't have a lot of room for making it super comfortable. In the future, I would leave a lot of extra space there, and that way I could get a lot of comfort finish on there, make it a really comfortable ring. So like I said earlier, I'm taking it back to the mandrel here and I'm just using sandpaper and I'm giving it a brush finish and this is exactly what I wanted. So this is the process that I'll use in the future. So now we've got a nice looking ring, but we could have done this out of stainless steel or any other silver metal. So we're going to heat oxidize this ring and this is going to make it pitch black and it's going to look amazing. So to evenly heat it, I've got this wire jig here. I can actually do multiple rings on it. That's why you see all the different segmentations to it and it's self-centering that way it keeps them separate. So this is actually what I'll use if I'm doing a batch of like Damascus rings, for example. And then I have the lathe turning and that just keeps the ring rotating that way we can evenly heat it And you'll see I'm wearing gloves this whole time. I've cleaned everything off very thoroughly with alcohol I don't want to get any contaminants or grease or oil on this ring because that'll negatively impact the finish that we end up with And So I'm just going to be taking this blowtorch. And I'm just slowly heating it up You can see it changes to a wide variety of colors It starts at kind of an amber color goes to more of a purple Then you can see the blue coming out of it and then it kind of loses its color and goes back to more of an amber Amber, kind of silvery finish and then finally we start getting that black finish and this looks so cool when you see it happen in real time it happens in just a matter of like 10 seconds that it gets pretty close to the final finish and this just looks like no other metal that I've ever worked with it's really interesting and what's so cool about it is that it doesn't ruin the surface finish of everything all the polished surfaces those still look really nice and glossy and then that brushed finish to it, that looks great as well. So I'm very happy with the way this turned out. I just let it air dry for about 30 minutes. I didn't want to dunk it in water. That might cause like maybe some warping or some weird patterns to show up on it. It, it could have been fine, but I just left it out for like 30 minutes. Then it was cool to the touch and then we're okay to go from there. So I'm just pulling it off of our wire jig here. And then I'm going to wipe it off with this paper towel. I've got a little bit of alcohol in it. And you can see this thing turned out incredible. It's got such a sharp, defined look to it. The brush finish on it looks really professional. And then those mirror polished edges just add a little bit of shine to it. It's subtle, but it really makes the ring pop. This is one of those rings that just transforms in the last 10 minutes of making it. And it's just so cool to see how they turn out. So that's the ring. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. I think this was a super fun project. It's always fun working with new materials. I think the results are really amazing. If you guys want to see this ring on my website, let me know. I think this could have some really good potential and we might even be able to do stuff like an obsidian finish to it. So I'm really interested in experimenting with that. So if you've got any feedback for me, please let me know. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If this is your first time on my channel, you can click that subscribe button below the video. That'll subscribe you to my channel. That way you can see all the videos I post. 
And like I say in all my videos, I've got a ring website as well as a supplies website. So if you want to make rings, that supplies website, that's for you. And if you want to buy rings, that ring site, that's for you. And also, like I said earlier in the video, if you're interested in any of the Patrick Adair Designs hats or t-shirts, those are on my supplies website. So you can just go there, check them out. And I might have a discount code in there. Like I said earlier, we're not really charging a lot for these. We're basically selling them at cost. So we might not be able to afford that. But if it's possible, even if it's a small one, I'll have that in the description. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.